Hello guys and welcome to a new Stone Division 2 video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game 1 of a best of 3 between Vesley and Grey Fox in the 3rd place final of the Season 4 playoffs of the Steel Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Boba. And on our left, playing on the allied side, we have Vesley using the second armoured French and the Vanguard deployment type. And on our right, in the blue team, playing on the Axis side, we have Grey Fox using the 20th Panzer and the Vanguard deployment type. So both these players have played fantastically well during the league, and they managed to get all the way to the semi-finals. Unfortunately, Grey Fox was knocked out by Karma and Vesley was taken down by Gonzo. So here they are playing for the third place position. I believe there was prize money involved, so there is still all to play for for these two players. So hopefully these games will be awesome to watch. And let's have a look a little bit at these divisions. Second French, a very aggressive division that relies on the use of the Shermans. Also a lot of like M8 Spy in phase A and just like the M8 Greyhounds in general. Uh, can be very, very fast to get across the map, uh, up the roads and transport snipe at the start. So they're quite deadly, something that the second French can use very well. They can also get the uh, P-38s, of course, in phase A uh, to do some bombing strikes, which could be effective. On the side of the 20th Panzer, things can be also aggressive over there. They get uh, captured T-34s. They've also got plenty of Panzer IVs, of course. Uh, the captured T-34s are great because they're super fast on-road and off-road compared to Panzer IVs, so it gives them a little bit of a, a way to get them to the front line quickly in comparison to other decks that have things like the Shermans. So the 20th Panzer is quite nice, and you've also got some other nice units in the form of the Beuter Stalin, of course, we can't forget about that, and the rocket artillery as well. And I think you can get the 280 millimeter Verfrommens. So those can really be crucial in the mid to late game because I think you can only get them from phase B onwards uh, to kind of break down uh, defenses, especially on a map like this, Boba. And we haven't seen a Boba before in the tournament so far. Uh, this river very much sh uh, slows things down quite substantially. It does, I believe, make it slightly blue sided I would say uh, due to this flag here and the fact that blue side can reinforce onto this chunk of land is the way that they can kind of get an advantage onto this flag I guess it's not that hard for red side to defend due to the buildings here and also the heavy cover but it's certainly a place where blue side can get a bit of an advantage whereas the red side advantage is really up here onto this bridge where they have the high ground that can cover this bridge but again it's not exactly difficult for the blue side to get into the town and hold it from here because all they'd need is an infantry squad in this building or maybe further back by the way, let's have a look at some of the infantry and units going down. So on the left side here for Vesley, going to be a couple of Shermans at the start. Sapir's Flamethrower. Further down we've got two Flamethrowers, Sapir's Spy unit in the captured 251 and also an M4. Further down, another Flamethrower moving forwards, Voltages M4. Two Flamers moving forwards on the bottom side, make that three with a Bazooka. Spy, two Voltages squads in M2. Five half tracks, M8 spy pushing forwards with two, uh, two Shermans. So there's actually five Shermans on the field, and that's his orders there. Orders for the side of Grey Fox does have a Geo 145 coming out at the start. On the bottom, it's just going to be an Alfklader. Panzer Grenz deployed, well, unloaded very quickly there with the Marder 1 and Panzer 3 following up. Panzer 3 uh, moving to cover the road across this bridge. Or as that's Truppen, Panzer Vernichtung's 45 mil actually moving up onto the high ground here as that's Truppen. Uh, further up for the centre, Panzergrenz, Panzer III following up, T-34 has moved into position to cover this road on the bridge there, and Alfklada on the top side. Beuter Stalin has been brought in on the very top with the Panzer III at the start. So these two GOs that have been brought in, uh, they can be taken out of the sky by the 50 cows on all of the uh, units that the French have, but it will give him a lot of information on what he's coming up against. Spitfire is being brought in, they will likely be able to shoot down both of these with a short strafe. That's one down, he's going to go straight for the next one. Remove the eyes from Grey Fox. It'd be nice actually to see uh, a bait with these. Uh, you could probably bring in some serious AA at the start or something and then just have a recon aircraft like flying over the top and then bait in a 
fighter aircraft that can then get shot down. That would be kind of funny. You would, of course, have to invest quite a lot of NA, NA, AA to make that happen, so that's why you probably wouldn't. Uh, but either way, Marta 1 is in position here. What's that firing at? Has it got shot onto the onto the voltages there? I thought that Marder 1 possibly had a shot onto the M4A1, but no serious engagements just yet. It looks like Vesely's deployed a lot on the bottom side to try and get across the bridge and secure an offensive flag at the start, which he did manage to do. Meanwhile, it looks like Grey Fox has put a lot of his effort into the top side, including that boy to Stalin there. So we're going to have to see how this uh, continues. Panda 3 going to be able to engage the M5 half-track there. Half-track manages to just move out of line of sight quickly. You see a nice salient here for Vesely so far, and I think he can probably try and follow this up quite quickly. Because the high ground here for Grey Fox is usually something you'd want to have under control uh, from the start of the match, so, so that you can control what comes across these bridges. But since he's allowed Vesely to move across with all of his fast units, uh, that does make things a lot more difficult for him, because now he has to go ahead and clean out this heavy forest before he can then continue. Well, the Alpha Cloud here might get a nice engagement with the Bazooka, but the Thompson submachine guns technically have more damage on them. The Alpha Cloud, however, is in cover. So this Alpha Cloud could potentially chase down the Bazooka if he spotted that in position. Spitfire is going to come in for the strafing run, though, and the Alpha Cloud are taken care of. It's a nice job with the Spitfire there, but good push coming across here for Grey Fox. Manages to get some Urzats to open onto the opposite side of the river and is going to make a move with the boy to Stalin and the T-34. And there are two M4s up here, Bazooka Squad in position, M4A2 further, further down as well, on the bombing strike coming in there, DB-73. Guess just making sure that that was dead. It seems surprising to me that he would bring in a bomber to kill an Alpha Cloud Squad. That might be a little bit of a waste in my opinion. But let's see how this goes on the top side. The Erzat Slippen almost ready to push up. I think he's just waiting for the Panzer III here. Another Panzer Gren also on its way. M4 is moving into position. I wouldn't be surprised to see the M4s in the centre move up to the top side as well to counteract the offensive push of this uh, boy to Stalin. Sapiers do have bazookas as well. So there's a bazooka and a sapir squad. It's going to be up to these Erzat Slippen to find those squads uh, before the tanks... Uh, get hit by the bazookas and these spitfire is going to make it very difficult because it's not going to take long to pin down these as stripping and when the as stripping back off kind of makes the uh, tanks a lot less effective oh the as stripping there have line of sight onto the bazooka bazooka's gone so that's one threat down gray fox just needs to be careful he doesn't get overzealous there well bazooka here has actually managed to sneak all the way up to the marder on this bottom side very nicely done there by Vesely sneaking that squad through. Flamethrower squad. Going to be able to push the Azaz Trippin back. This is a nice position for Grey Fox, but he's definitely got to get rid of anything in these buildings ASAP. Otherwise, it's just going to get to a point where he can be surrounded and pushed up on from multiple sides. The DB is coming in for the bombing strike. That's going straight for the Azaz Trippin. And removing the infantry squads of Grey Fox is certainly the way for Vesely to make this push ineffective. As a strip and do have shots onto the flamethrower here, I believe. They might kill that off in good time, which would be nice because he can then maintain control over the flag on the top side and keep things 12 to 12. No future pushes on the bottom side just yet from Vesley. Nothing coming in. And no real offensive moves being made. Looks like all eyes are up on the top side. As the M4A2 engages a Panzer IV at range, it is being attacked by heat rounds. Those heat shells are now all used up. But that's a spot on shot. M4A2 goes down. Oh, the sappers firing away do take out the T34. That gives away the position. Can the Panzer III back off in time? I don't think it will. Oh, maybe just. Yep, yeah, sappers are going to get pinned down just pulled out of the building in time before that happened and yeah he's going to have to make sure that he gets some infantry to go clean that out otherwise things are going to end badly so now we see the boy to Stalin trying to engage the M10s the M10s here are in a very bad spot especially with the two Panzer IVs also engaging the Panzer III is the target of the M10s 
I'm surprised they're bouncing Panzer IV shots. There we go, there's one down. Second one is going to come under fire soon. Two more M10s coming in on the top side. Another one in the center. Voyager Stalin's actually backing off. Did that take a shot? No, it didn't. I'm surprised to see that. Multiple bazookas now coming in. I guess with the smoke, maybe, that's what why he's backing off here. That one bazooka just zooming through. That's a big threat for the boy to Stalin. Will it unload? It has unloaded. Okay, so he managed to get away with that. Just the Panzer III going down. Both the bazooka squads dead. Nicely done. I'm just trying to keep it on the bottom side as well. But still nothing going on down there. Just more and more pushing coming in from Grey Fox on the top side. To which Vestley is being forced to reply. The half-track is going to go down there to the M4A2 half-track. Sappers are revealing themselves again. Now they are no longer on return fire. Uh, this Panzer Grenadier is going to have to be careful not to get chewed up too much. But more infantry is certainly what's needed here uh, to help get through uh, just this lonely Sappers squad and control this high ground. If he can get like, a few Panzer Grenadier squads onto the floor in front of this these uh, Boyd Stalin and the Panzer Fours, then nothing's really going to stop him. The M4A2 has to back off if like the Panzer Benigdongs run up on it, for example. And then he can control from the high ground, the reinforcement point at the back here. That's going to give him two flags, or three in total, offensively. And that'd be very nice. That would then force Vesley to push on the bottom side, which I feel like he already should be doing, uh, or had should, should have been doing from the start, really. He's kind of slowed down and allowed Grey Fox to consolidate his forces down there, and that's not too good. The DB-73 coming in with a bombing strike. Looks like an ME-109G2 also on the case. That bombing strike actually going for the AA itself. But the ME-109, can that finish things off? I don't think it will. The Bofors going to force that back. No AA cover for the ME-109, unfortunately. Oh, can just about out turn the Spitfire. But going to go straight into the AA again. I reckon that's going to go down due to the AA hitting it. We'll keep an eye out. There is a little bit of a push coming through on the bottom side. Yep, ME-109 did go down in the end. So Panzer three taking out the uh, voltages there with the help of the Panzer Grenz and the Ersatz Truppen. Panzer Vernichtung spotting those at close range. That Panzer Vernichtung is very nice for taking care of the M8. Uh, also... The Ersatz Truppen and Panzergrenz pushing through here will be able to deal with the two-man squads quite well. Two M4A2s on the other side that can potentially provide cover, but the trees here are really going to make things difficult. Let's keep an eye on this top side. Marta 1 moving up does have line of sight onto the M2, M4A2. Probably shouldn't leave that up to chance, but gets two APCR shots on target. Panzer Vedicton is in position to just go for that M4A2, so I'm surprised he is not doing so. All of these tanks just kind of sitting here quite idle at the moment because he still hasn't dealt with the sappers. This seems like a very, very slow push at the moment. Like, he's got perfect positioning for covering the center reinforcement road, and he's only got to have a few more infantry ahead of him, and then he's fine. And the ME-109 does manage to take out the French aircraft, but then the JU-87 is going to go down here after cluster bombing the M4A2. This 45 mil can it break the armor of the M4A2? I would doubt it, especially at that range. So yeah, these Panzer Benichtungs again, they could easily move up. The Panzergrens moving in here might just be what he needs now, finally, to get through. Uh, these sappers and then all of this armor can move forwards and that makes it very difficult for Bestie to basically do anything for the rest of the game. Uh, the 45mm did kill the M4A2 so that's something. Uh, the two M4A2s coming in from the spawn note will cover off those losses and it looks like the Bofors is also being moved up to help at close range with infantry. It's smart to do especially against units that are maximum range away. Of course, don't want to get into machine gun range with the Bofors, but you can certainly engage infantry from 1,000 to 1,500 meters and be okay. So there we go. That's that flag taken. Panzergrenz now moving up ahead of their tanks. Here comes the Panzer Fours. And we've got our assault going on. Found the Sapiers in the back gardens. They're going to be very dead. And there you go. Easy as that, Grey Fox. Took him a little while, but uh, managed to make it work. 
So nicely done. All right, as I to open, pushing in now. Flamethrower will be able to do a decent job against the Azaz Tropen, so those won't last too long. But we'll reveal that they are in position there, so that will give Grey Fox something to head towards. But having control over this bridge is very important, especially with the Panzer Vernichtungs in position. I like the Panzer Vernichtungs following up all of Grey Fox's forces. It's helped him in the top side. Looks like this one finally took out the M4A2, and then again, same on the bottom side. The M4A2 in the open, being engaged by Marders and Panzer Fours. Oh, nice shot there. On the reverse, on the move, takes out a Marder 1. Now the M10 coming in from light cover. Oh, nice kill onto the half track there. An M10, or oh, Crew Panic, does take out the second Marder 1, though, on the ridge. Things currently 14 to 10 in favour of Grey Fox. Another crew panic there from an APCR shot. Shots coming in from the Panzer up, up on the ridge here. Bazooka is actually in a very close position, but with the Panzer going standing in front, not sure the Bazooka would get the shot off. I'm going to be revealing these M10s now, hidden on this ridge. Grey Fox does have to be careful with this push. Because whilst the M10s are very slow to aim, they are still very close, and uh, that's going to cause problems. But yeah, the M10s are struggling to turn their turrets fast enough, and so the Panzer IV has a very big advantage in that engagement. Oh, here comes the M4A376. We've moved into Phase B. He has some of those available, two M8s as well. And this JU87 looks to be Finishing off that. That J87 moving to engage this lumber tanks would be very, very nice. If he could get a good shot there with those, or he is bringing it around. Can he micro this so that it drops the bombs on target? Uh, looks like he didn't. We'll see if he can make that do the job. That would have been awesome if he'd managed to micro that around and then get the bust the bombs onto those targets. He has managed to capture this flag. He's actually got all of the flags now on the top side. Very, very nice push through here from Grey Fox eventually to 16 to 8. And now he's also managing to clean up Vesely's forces on the bottom side. So it looks like Vesely's relied a lot on these Shermans and so far Grey Fox has been able to take them on with his Panzer Fours, with his Marders, all that good stuff. And it's kind of negated an advantage that the M4s would usually have over the Axis side, especially when these longer range engagements. Grey Fox managing to find longer range engagements with the Panzer Fours is quite nice, although I think, strictly speaking, M4s should defeat Panzer Fours at range. Uh, but with the numbers and the veterancy on these tanks, Grey Fox is managing to put that in his favour. The semi 109 looks like it's panicked over A8, so that's probably going to end up getting shot down. Off map now coming in from Vesley on this top side, 155 mil off map. Looks like he's a little concerned about things that have been maybe moved up into the forests here, but it doesn't seem as though Grey Fox has really continued his push with his infantry. It's all just idle out of cover, which is rather strange. Uh, I think maybe Grey Fox by default has hold position on or at least like not like doesn't have auto cover on because it looks like when he is microing his units and they stop near buildings they don't automatically get in them which would make me assume that auto cover is off and if that's the case then he needs to be more stringent with his micro to make sure that he doesn't get caught out when things are in the open the panzer four here going to be at close range not where he wants to be not with a fast aiming m4 breathing down his neck 45 mil going to be trying to help out with an engagement. I feel like that was a bit of a over-aggressive move since he had seen these M4A2s on the backside of this uh, hill here. So I'm not a massive fan of that push and it did cost him quite a bit there losing both his AT gun and those tanks. Of course the Panzergrenz and the Panzerfaust and Panzerstrex that they have can prevent these M4s from moving up the road, but still, that's uh, a couple losses on the bottom side there that could make quite a big difference. Eddie 8 has now been brought up onto the ridge. Boyd Stalin looks like that got bombed. Not too much damage done there, though. 
Voltages have been moved up. Two M4A 376s now on the way. Those M4A 376s can chop through these Panzer IVs very, very nicely and the T-34 there. So I would expect them to do very well in that engagement as long as the Boyd Stalin on the top side uh, doesn't get in the way. But the Panzer Vindictons here, going to take out the M8. Not much that could do anyway. Voltages have been moving through here. Looks like Bessie is going to unload that and use it to clear out the Panzer Vindictons. And the M5 half track can just continue on its way to capture a flag potentially. But 15 to 9 now, still a double tick for Grey Fox, still in a very good position, bringing in two more AT guns for the top side. Looks like as that T 34 falls back, it will come under fire from the M4A3s. Never mind, looks like it was saved by cover or just got back far enough not to be shot at, unless Bessie just changed the order there. And looks like on the bottom side, the M4A2 got taken out as the Panzervernichtungs were being engaged. Multiple Marders here and a Panzer IV now being brought up opposite these tanks and I'm hoping Vesti doesn't make the same mistake that Grey Fox just did by pushing up onto that ridge against superior numbers. Panzer IV engaging the M4A3 does manage to get a shot into the armor there but it will go down. These M4A3s they have such a good snapshot. They aim so fast. And it's just really good for taking on units at close range. Even though they excel even at longer ranges. M8. Going to be engaged by the Marder there. As that Strippen on their way to provide a little bit of a front line. The Voltages there didn't like the engagement with the Panzergrens. Giving the Panzergrens time to reload is not a way you want to do it. I think the Voltages probably would have... Actually, probably not. I was going to say they might have won, but because due to the veterancy, actually, the Panzer goes down to veterancy, so it would just be the stress that makes the, the biggest difference there. With the, I was going to say Thompson machine guns should beat the Panzergrens as long as the MG 42s are reloading. Letting the MG 42 reloads means that the next time they engage, they're going to take another big chunk of damage before they start actually hurting each other. Uh, but anyway, as that's to open, they're going to unload. As they are, gives a front line for the Panzer IVs. Going to reveal one of the M2A1s, or M4A2s, sorry. Du87 on the way, though, to deal with that. Can this Bofa actually hit that? I'd be surprised if it could. Looks like it's blocked line of sight wise. Yeah, it's going to engage way too late. So the M4A2 is going to go down. It's a nice kill by the Ju87 there. Ju87 might take quite a lot of damage, but. Should be able to break line of sight. As a second, both is behind did start engaging, so it was enough damage to take it down just after they stopped firing. As that trooper managed to make it all the way across the bridge, it's going to capture another flag. Panzer fours and Marder ones do take out the M8 that was pushed up. Voltage is also going down there. Does leave the Panzergren in a position to take out the armor. So Grey Fox now focusing on this bottom side has done very well, and also pushed all the way through here. On the top, this is very, very difficult for Vesley. Because these M4A3s, whilst they can push up here and probably do quite a lot of damage, there are so many vehicles that he's got to kill at the same time. They can all engage an M4A3. So this would be the time where the off-map that he had previously would be fantastic for pinning all of this stuff down. Then he could push up with the M4A3 and get loads of kills. So maybe that was a little premature on that top side, the off-map. With the Vultures getting bombed out there though, it's going to allow the Urzas to open to stick in position. Looks like the Panzergrens here managed to get killed off by the M4A2 before they did too much damage. Pioneers up on the ridge are going to go down. Marder 1 traded for the M4A2. I'm pretty sure Grey Fox is fine with that. He might try and make a counter push, but the previous push might have left a sour taste in his mouth. DB coming in with a bombing strike. Bombing strikes onto these Marders are pretty useful because the Marders don't have an open top, or do have open top, sorry, so the Bombers can do quite a lot of damage uh, to them. In that case, the Marder survives. Pretty lucky, actually. The Panzer IV and T-34 already across the bridge now. Panzer Vernichtungs moving up here. They're going to unload, be able to kill the M5 half-track. Easy kill. Takes away that salient. As that's Tropen can now push all the way through, covered by uh, the armor on their side. There is two more M4A3s on the way. 
And unfortunately for Vesley, things don't really get better throughout this game because due to both players having Vanguard deployment type, he doesn't have a late game income that can help him overcome the value that Grey Fox has already got out of his units. And I feel like in terms of the M4 engagements and the M10 engagements, a lot of points died on the side of Vesley and Grey Fox didn't lose many of his Panzer IVs or if he lost like Marders and things, it was a lot more cost efficient. So that's left Grey Fox with like a lot more units on the map that Vesley now has to cut through with the units that he has in order to make a difference. And that's only going to get more and more difficult, especially if Grey Fox remains on the offensive in multiple areas. It's going to stretch Vesley very thin, and then each flag is just going to go down one by one. Nice bombing strike there. Surrenders the sappers. Does pin down his own Panzer Grenz. Panzer Vinikdung is going to get bombed out by the DB. The use of these DBs has been quite nice overall. Initially, I was a little... Oh, I left a lot to be desired, the uh, the DB-73s, but now it seems to be in a much better position and, and doing a lot more damage. The bombers here, or oh, sorry, the Panzer III engaging the AT gun. Probably going to fall in favour of the AT gun there. The Panzer III doesn't really have the, uh, the armour to stand up to an AT gun like that. Doesn't have the HE to pin it down much either. So I think eventually that should get through the armour there, especially with the help of the M4A3s at least. I started to laugh just because it looked like this 57 was actually going to lose that engagement, which it really shouldn't. Multiple tanks here. New off map on its way. Oh, that's not good. Did take a shot. Almost got taken out. That was very risky. Did manage to get the off map down. Perfect. This is what he needs to break back on this top side. Uh, unfortunately, I think a lot of this stuff might fall back into cover behind these buildings when they do get hit. But if he times this right... He can probably get the M4A3s to move up and do some serious damage on this armor and then follow it up with some infantry and he should be absolutely fine. But big push coming in on the bottom side. Panzer IV going to be able to take out the half track. Oh, that's troop and pushing forwards. That's 17 to 7. Especially being forced to bring in the infantry that he probably needs to make a push on the top side into the bottom. And there goes the off map. It is going to start pinning down a lot of this armor. This is when the M4A3s need to start pushing up. Nice kill from the off map onto the Panzer IV. The bombers following up here would also be nice if he had them on hand. Especially when he actually makes the push initially. Because then he can take care of any AT guns and infantry squads that are, are being particularly annoying. The sappers and the voltages. Looks like they are being pushed towards this flag. To capture that back. The Black 37 actually has line of sight onto that and is engaging at maximum range. It's going to take out the half track. Looks so like Panzer IV was taken out by the 57mm further back. But Vesely has a lot of work to do in not a lot of time. 3 minutes and 45 seconds left on the clock. JU87 coming in for the cluster bomb strike. The ME109 going for the bombing strike did allow. Looks like Grey Fox to get the JU-87 strike through. That JU-87 might get shot down here. Because it did take a lot of damage whilst it was bombing. Will the Bofors get it? He will indeed. Okay. That's not too bad. M5 half-track trying to push across. is going to get taken out by the Panzer IV. Marder moving up onto the ridge. Takes out the Sappers in their half-track. Okay, the Voltagers actually moving up here to close range is a great idea because... Their close range grenades can take out the Marda due to it being open top. Uh, looks like the push did come through on this top side. The M4A1, M4A2, sorry, and the M4A3 have managed to get up here, but now being engaged by the T34. Marda 1's coming under mortar fire. It looks like potential there for a pushback by Vesley, but that's going to be the M4A3 going down. I believe that was to the Marda. So, good kill. Panzergren's going to be pinned down. Off map coming down again. Voyager Stalin is still alive, so that's still going to be a pain to get rid of. Especially without the M4A 376s close by. Looks like flamethrowers here being overrun in the center. Grey Fox just probing all the weak points now. 
of Vesley just to put the final nail in the coffin because Vesley is starting to make some ground back here. The Marder goes down. Panzer Vernichtung's not going to be able to get another Panzer Shrek off. And yeah, Vesley's quickly taking back flags. It's going to be two flags and then this third flag. If the AT-8 goes down, the Panzer Grenz are found. That'll bring him back to 16 flags. It's probably still not enough. He can, of course, start moving across the open here to maybe capture the flag in the center. But as I already said, there's still so much work to do for Vesley to get back in the game. Like, in, at the end of the day, I think the KDs are actually going to be pretty close. Because now Vesley built up his push on the top side and made a push back. He did kill a lot of Grey Fox's forces, but I think Grey Fox has done enough work here to finish the job. And the Sappers, they're going to try and get their bazooka shot off. Will they do so? No, they won't. Panzer IV able to chew them up. Oh, the second Sapper squad managed to get it through. Just in time, but multiple Panzergrens here dealing with pinned down Sappers. Going to be nice and easy for Grey Fox to clean that up. This Panzer IV is moving up onto the flag. Might get taken out by the Sappers, but that will leave them vulnerable to the Erzast Open due to sheer numbers in those squads. M8 still pushing aggressively. Oh, the boy to Stalin <laughs> says no. Gets right in the way there. Oh, nice trade from the Marder. Takes out the M4A376. That's crucial. Engagement between the M4A2 and the boy to Stalin. And the Mortifier help with that. It won't land on target. Boy Stalin was reloading for a very long time there. But yeah, the Panzergrenz now pushing through. These are Panzergrenz with DPs, actually. All they got to do is really pin these down and then rush on to them to surrender them. That would be ideal. But 10 seconds left. Still 15 to 9. Grey Fox managing to hold a double tick for most of the game. Seems to have given him the win. Nicely done, Grey Fox. A minor defeat for Vesley. 28 minutes and 48 seconds. Game goes to Grey Fox. Nicely done. So 3,350 kills to 2,820 losses. You see the KD at the end was still in favour of Grey Fox. Uh, but certainly come back a long way for Vesley. So I think Vesley had the right idea. Like as I, I basically ex explained how to take back that top side. And he did almost exactly that with the off map and pushing up with the tanks at the right time in order to break that all down. Uh, but unfortunately the double tick means that you have so much less time to react to your opponent. Especially when your opponent is still pushing in other areas and you've already taken so many losses from the start of the game in a game where you have the same deployment type as your enemy. So you can't ever rely on income changes to give you points to get back into the game. You've got to just make sure that every unit, like if you do get behind, that every unit you have gets value. And when it, and if they don't, and that continues to happen, you're only going to stay behind. So it puts you in a very tough spot. Either way, let's have a look. The off-map they're killing two Panzer IVs is really nice. Uh, the AT guns, we didn't see much use of AT guns early on from Vesley. He relied a lot on the M4s, and that may have potentially been a mistake because Grey Fox actually relied more on Marders and Panzer III's, which have lighter armor and don't deal with AT guns as well. So maybe a couple AT guns at the start would have really helped out Vesley to shut down some of the pushes that Grey Fox was trying to make with his armor. But yeah, I feel like the M4s just really didn't do a good job. The Boyd Stalin, of course, is always going to be difficult to deal with. Uh, but the positioning that Grey Fox, well, the position that Grey Fox put it in was surprising at the start for me. I think it was very, very vulnerable multiple times to being picked off by units like Bazookas. And I think Grey Fox may have got away with that more than he would against like more against Vesey than he would against other players like Karma or, or Gonzo for example because when it was on the low ground before it pushed across the bridge to go to the high ground in that position you can close range onto Voyager Stalin and that takes away the advantage that the Voyager Stalin has because it, re it allows you to flank it much easier it allows you to get more penetration against those units so 
yeah, that was something that Grey Fox managed to get away with and then made Vesely pay for. So M4A2, M4A2, M10, you know, all of these units going down here to that Voyage Stun and makes it pay, its, pay itself off, which is really nice. The Panzer threes as well uh, did very well early on with the Panzer IV support there. Panzer Grens getting a nice bunch of kills. Panzer Grens do really trump uh, the French infantry quite nicely, especially the Voltages at least. Uh, maybe not so much like Nueve if you see them, but generally don't see them because of uh, availability issues. But again, Panzer IV has taken out the M10s. If the Panzer IV, or sorry, M4s were used in the place of the M10s for those longer range engagements, I think we would have seen Vesti do a lot better. But those M10s, I think they're more ideal for, say, mid-range engagements as, as opposed to a longer range engagements. They're not good at close range because their turrets turn really slowly, and they're not good at longer ranges because their AP falloff is quite harsh, I think. So... And they also don't have much armor, so they generally get beaten at range because even if some, if even if their opposing unit has less AP, uh, they've only got to penetrate less armor at a distance. But yeah, overall, uh, really nicely done. I like the composition of uh, Grey Fox's armor: Panzer Fours, Marders, Panzer Threes. Very staple of the 20th Panzer. Made it work. Great job. And that's the first game of a best of three between these two players. So yeah, I would say that was. Uh, Pretty awesome game, honestly. Uh, both players played well. And I'm really, really looking forward to the second game. We'll have to wait and see if Grey Fox can win a second and uh, take it 2 0, or if Vesley can get one back. But that's it for now. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>